screaming, crying, perfect storm. Yes, these do happen to be lyrics penned by my favorite artist and role model, Taylor Swift. However, <laughs> they also happen to describe what I expected a panic attack would be like. Little did I know, panic attacks and the anxiety that caused them are usually not big episodes like this at all. Anxiety is a silent attacker. It's estimated that 44 million American adults suffer with anxiety. 44 million. Even more shockingly, 75% of these adults will have their first event of anxiety before the age of 22. Now, I'm not completely sure what Taylor Swift meant when she said, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22, but I'm pretty sure she didn't mean anxious and nervous like most of these 22-year-olds must be feeling. When I first heard that this many people suffer with anxiety, I was really shocked. But then when I sat down and thought about it a little more, I realized that it's not all that surprising. And here's why. We enter college at the ripe age of 18 and leave anywhere from three to hopefully not six years later from the ages of 21 to 24. And as college students, we have so many reasons for anxiety because of the pressure placed on us from every angle. We enter college being told that these are going to be the best days of our lives, but often they can turn into some of the worst days of our lives. And the reason for that I believe stems in a shift that many students experience from being intrinsically motivated in school to being extrinsically motivated in school. Intrinsic motivation is when our behaviors are driven by internal rewards. And when we enter college, we're just that. We're looking for true friendship, expanding our horizons, following our passions, and gaining fulfillment out of all of our endeavors. Unfortunately, this doesn't always last. And often, because of the daily struggles of being a college student, our shift becomes extrinsic. Now, instead of looking for fulfillment, we're looking for the most likes on a picture, or getting invited to that party, beating the competition, and achieving the perfect 4.0. Psychologists tell us that behaviors that are intrinsically motivated have opportunity to be self-sustaining and long-lasting. But extrinsically motivated behaviors can be extinguished easily once the potential reward or punishment is removed. And as college students, because we fixate ourselves upon those potential rewards or punishments, we push ourselves to our breaking points. We get completely stressed out and totally anxious. Speaking from personal experience, this sucks. Now I'm about to get a little bit personal. But my friends and family have always known me as someone who's very outgoing, ambitious, and dedicated to my work. And I've been like this my whole life. I went to a competitive private school and was on a traveling debate team. So I was used to working my hardest. And that wasn't going to change for me when I was given the opportunity to pursue my pre-medical studies at the amazing Harriet L. Wilkes Honors College. I knew I had to try my best, so I pushed myself to work my hardest in my academics, in my extracurriculars, in my internships, and in my social life. I lived in fear of getting an A minus, or not getting the results I needed in the lab, or simply not doing well at a dance practice. I lived in fear of failure. Unfortunately, this fear manifests itself upon me in ugly ways. When I get stressed out, I start pulling out my hair, I lose my appetite, and I start treating myself and the people around me poorly. However, my stress didn't really get the best of me until last summer, when I had to take the biggest exam of my life thus far, the MCAT. The MCAT is an exam you have to take in order to apply to medical school. It's seven hours long and covers basically everything you'll learn in college. So naturally, I was a bit stressed out. However, being stressed out and anxious to an extent is normal and actually beneficial to your performance. According to Stanford neurobiologist Robert Chapolsky, our goal isn't a life without stress. The idea is to have the right amount of stress. The right amount of stress allows us to perform well at our activities. The issue is when this amount of stress turns into the wrong amount of stress. And that's what happened to me. I started fearing what would happen if I did poorly on that exam? Would I let myself down? Would I let my friends and my family down? What would I do if I couldn't get into medical school? Would I have a future? Do I have a backup plan? All of these questions started to build up upon each other and all of my fears as well until I had my first panic attack. This panic attack wasn't the big emotional event I was expecting. Instead, my heart rate went up. 
I started hyperventilating. I lost my focus and I lost my appetite for a few hours. And even though it wasn't a traumatic or tragic event, it did shake me up. And I recognized that it, I had to fix this if I wanted to do well on this exam. So I did my research. And I talked to my friends and family. And I learned how to help myself. And I actually ended up doing pretty well in the MCAT the first time around and will be attending medical school in the fall. However, after speaking to my friends and family and learning that so many of them have had similar stories of school-induced anxiety, I figured that what I learned is worth sharing. So what can you do if you're feeling this way? Well, first, you need to recognize that this is a problem. Nothing in life, especially not an exam, should lead us to feeling like the world is crashing down around us. In my case, what would have been the worst thing that would have happened if I did poorly on that exam? I probably would have studied a little bit harder and done fine the second time around. No one, except myself, actually cared how I was going to do on that test. So I had to let that go in order to do my best. Next, don't keep your anxiety to yourself. Talk to the people closest to you. Those people want to help you because they want to see you succeed. And it worked out really well for me that I have two of the best parents in the world who were there for me every step of the way. They gave me reassurance that everything was going to be OK while also giving me encouragement to do my best. And their support meant the world to me during that time. I also have a really great older sister and group of friends who can recognize when I'm stressed out even before I am and help me stop my stress symptoms in their tracks. However, if all else fails, go talk to the Counseling and Psychological Services office at your school. The people there want to help you, and they'll allow you to vent to them and allow you to speak to them about, their pro about your problems. And just talking about your anxiety will help you move over it. Finally, do something that allows you to take your mind off of whatever is causing you stress. Um, I'm not a particularly religious person, but my father encouraged me to go to the temple and pray. And that made the biggest difference to me. Praying and knowing that there was something out there that was greater than me and that my actions were not the be-all, end-all in the world really helped me alleviate so much of the stress I was placing on myself. However, if not that, do something else. Start practicing an instrument. Play a sport. Go practice yoga. Paint. Do something that takes your mind off of whatever is causing you stress whether that's a deadline or an election or an outcome or an exam. Being stressed out as a collegiate is inevitable. It comes with the territory. However, we as college students can't let the stress and the negative symptoms of it run our lives. After my all-time low experience, I knew I had to fix this to myself because I aim to be a physician, which means I have years and years of schooling ahead of me. And I have years and years of more tests and more stressful situations as well. So I need to learn how to manage my stress now in order to do better in my future. And even though I'm not perfect, I still get very anxious and very stressed out. I'm better than I was in before. When I first heard this year's TEDx theme, Innovate and Lead, I knew I wanted to talk about something that I wish someone had spoken to me about earlier. So I thought back on my college experience. The best moments, the worst moments, and everything in between. And I knew I had to talk about the anxiety that so many college students struggle with on a daily basis. I know that talking about anxiety isn't going to make it go away. Not for you and not for me. However, I also know that if we can start this dialogue and if we can become OK with talking about our anxiety, recognizing its symptoms, we can stop it in its tracks and we can stop ourselves from pushing ourselves to our breaking points. I've had such an incredible time at the Harriet L. Wilkes Honors College, and I hope that every other student who comes here has as good of a time as I did. So let's get back to making college the best years of our lives and tell our fears, anxieties, and worries that we are never, ever, ever getting back together. <laughs>